What is money for? Is it a helpful resource to use for good? Or is the love of it the root of all evil? Actually, it's both. But God may have a different definition of success. Real success doesn't come overnight. It takes hard work and faithful planning. To use your dollars well, it takes more than a little sense. Hi, and welcome to Dollars and Cents. I'm co-host Yvonne Lewis, and our primary host is Ryan Mack, financial literacy expert, author, teacher, speaker. All right. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Just everything, everything. Proud to be here. Oh, yeah, yeah, we are so glad to have you mm -hmm. and love the information you've been bringing. I know that our Dare to Dream viewers are, are being so blessed by this information. Mm -hmm. Share this with your friends. Tell your friends to watch this program. Uh, we need it in our communities desperately, so right. we are so glad that you're doing this and tying it all to scripture. Absolutely. Tying all these principles into um, these financial economic principles into biblical principles. Right. Well, it's easy to do because everything in your life is related to scripture. Mm. And scripture supports every aspect. There's nothing that you can do, whether it be sleeping and breathing. All of the, everything, our daily activities, are what we do, how we think, how we feel, and especially everything good mm -hmm. is supported by scripture. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's very simple to do. And on this show, it's, it's one of my favorite shows um, because of, of programs rather, mm -hmm. essentially because we want to really support and, 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 and really put our arms around our entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. These entrepreneurs are out there every single day and they're having that, these ideas and they're trying to create something that's a product or a service for themselves. And I wanted to just really, uh, well, one, I wanted to highlight a scripture that to me uh, resonates when you are wanting to start a business. And I'll read it, it's out of Colossians uh, 3 and 23. That says, and whatever, whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Mm. And I think that every business owner should really just take heed of what the word is saying here because when you're starting a business, you have to ask yourself a question, why are you doing this? And uh, is this for money? Is this for fame or is this for power? Is this for a recognition? Is this to feel like you are validated as a person? Or are you doing this because Christ has led you to do this? Mm. Is this of the flesh or of the spirit? Good question. We have to go through that question. And many times businesses rise and fail mm. or many uh, businesses are successful according to the world, uh, but not according to what Christ has wanted to do. And we know, we all know that those businesses that are worldly successful are not necessarily successful in the eyes of that individual, especially with internal struggles. You might get all the money in the world, but what what does that money mean when you've lost your soul? That's right. That's, you know, I, I've looked at people on TV mm -hmm. and especially a lot of these rappers and mm -hmm. stuff, and they are so rich right. financially. Yeah. And they look so miserable. Right. I mean, I, don't, I never see real joy in their faces, mm -hmm. you know. They, they might smile sometimes, but they just look right. so miserable because financial wealth mm -hmm. does not, a man's life, Jesus said, consists of more than what he possesses. Right. So it's not just about what you have. Mm -hmm. It's no sin to have a lot. It's a right. blessing to have a lot. Right. But it's what you do. And is it of the flesh, as mm -hmm. you said, or is it of the spirit? I mean, we, and, we, and we have to ask these questions. I mean, and these questions are so pertinent and so critical because we want to make sure and uh, that we are, one, joyous in our lives. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we are content with what we have. Uh, and, and with our state and in our state, and we want to get to that level of prosperity. And prosperity doesn't mean um, have all the money in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be spiritually prosperous. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are walking in, 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 the, in the line, in alignment with what God has for your life, you can attain spiritual prosperity. You can attain, attain physical prosperity. And I'm trying to attain, attain that right now. There are many entrepreneurs out there like yourself who teach about health and awareness. So that's a weakness of mine. So I'll use your services to 
help me get more healthy. <laughs> Anytime. You know, uh, socially prosperous and making sure that we can try to make sure that we are aligned with what is going on in our communities. Mentally prosperous and making sure that our mindset is strong. So all these things together, we can achieve a certain level of prosperity we want in life. And there are entrepreneurs out there who have businesses uh, that can uh, really just uh, attach and, 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 and really direct us and use their products and services that we can buy and purchase and sometimes for free if it's through a nonprofit or what, that, what have you, that they uh, essentially say, let me assist you and, and fulfill a need in society and mm -hmm. where our passion intersects with our need in society, that's where we're gonna have the most happiness and the most joy because we're passionate about something and we're fulfilling a need about something as well. That is so true. For those who don't know what an entrepreneur right. is, what is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur, quite frankly, is just someone who said, hey, I have a skill, I have a talent, and I want to spend all my time creating something, whether it be a service, whether it be a product, and I want to offer this for other individuals to purchase. Okay. Uh, one of my favorite civil rights leaders was Madam C.J. Walker. Mm. She uh, started out in, in, in the, as a slave. She worked her way up to cleaning out tubs. And after she got out of cleaning out tubs, she started to say, now let me make this uh, beauty care and hot combs. And she was selling her beauty care and her hot combs and her, her husband said, you know what, uh, I think you're making enough money. We're making about, you know, ten, ten, twenty dollars a week. But back in those days, it was a lot of money. We're making, we're making enough money, and we're making, you know, let's just be content with what we have here. And she said, No, 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 no. I have to do something more because the more money I make, the more people I can help. And so her drive was not just to make the products. She was very good at making products, but her drive was to say that if she can build this enterprise and be successful at building this enterprise, then I can employ people mm. and I can put people to work. And I don't have to wait on the government. I don't have to wait on anything. I can create this entity and a lot of people are gonna be blessed by essentially what I've been able to put together. And this is what Christ wants us to do. He wants us to be fruitful and multiply and make sure that we can uh, use the skills and talents that he's provided us to create benefit for other individuals. When I was uh, first starting my business, I remember the trials I went through. I remember all those things that I had to do in order, and the, the connections. So what I did is I put together four steps that, I, uh, that uh, uh, future entrepreneurs, people who just have something in their mind that I would love to get individuals to just write down. Mm. And uh, these four steps are for those individuals out there, you don't know exactly what you want to do yet. You don't know if entrepreneurship is for you. And I actually do these steps every six months or so. Mm. And I write these steps down and, and I, I meditate and I think about, okay, what is God trying to tell me through these? What is, what is he trying to let me know uh, about these particular steps? So the first step is purpose, okay? Mm -hmm. Purpose and passion. The two most precious days of your life are the day you were born and the second day is the day you know why you were born, mm. right? So we have to figure out why we're here. And when you figure out why we're here, and you know, God knows why we're here. Right. Before we were even created in the womb, he knew exactly what was happening. He knew this is, this is the, the, the reason I'm putting this person out, I'm designing an individual that's gonna be uniquely tailored to this world. And this person's gonna have these skill sets and if they follow my word and my will, then they're gonna be able to use these skill sets to do fill in the blank. What is that? For me, my skill set was financial literacy. And I knew that I was called to, to teach financial literacy to help individuals to understand the value of money and, and why we have to use money. So the exercise I would like to give for finding your purpose and passion in step one, I would love everyone to take some time and, and, and take some time to do this. Maybe you can find a buddy if you like to, to figure out, hey, you know what? do this exercise with me because you might see something in me that I don't even see in myself. So write down 20 skills, talents, or hobbies that you possess. At least 20. It might be challenging, but just work your way through it. And maybe you can uh, complement some of these skills, talents, and hobbies. Maybe you get to 10 or 12 or maybe 15. But then the other additional ones, maybe write down things that you get mad at, things that you get upset about. When you're watching television and you're arguing about something, 
what is what is what is what is tapping into that passion? Mm. What was the last time you were arguing with someone and you just couldn't stop? You didn't want to break it away. What was it about sports? Was it about politics? Was it about law? Was it about what was it about health strategy? Whatever it was, because that one thing that you can't break yourself away from that could be tapping into your passion. Mm. So after the twenty things that you write down, you then want to uh, essentially get uh, that's going to give you a picture. It's going to start forming a picture that things that relate to one another and that might give you an indication that hey maybe this is something I should look into maybe I should look into being a journalist mm -hmm. maybe I should look into being a lawyer maybe I should look into being an accountant or maybe I should look into being a caterer whatever that is you're going to start seeing things uh, a picture that comes together so that's step one finding your purpose and passion for step two we want to make sure vision and you want to achieve that vision. Where there's no vision, the people perish. Right. One of my favorite scripture in the, in the word because it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Now, many people will say, you know, uh, they will take that to mean that where there's no vision, I, I, I will perish, meaning personally. Well, your vision is not for you. Your vision and it is for other individuals to bless someone else. Hmm. So when it says the people will perish, meaning this, Let's just say we have a, a community where someone has a vision of being a lawyer five years from now. Someone has a vision of being an accountant five years from now. Someone has a vision of being a caterer five years from now. If they all live in the same community, in the ideal world, when you start those businesses, a lawyer, an accountant, and a caterer, they will all be able to circulate their dollar amongst one another. They have their vision. They'll be able to spend their vision. They achieve their vision. They'll be able to take their money. That lawyer can get their taxes done to the accountant. That accountant can buy food at the caterer. That caterer can use that lawyer for legal services and so forth. And that's how we create the circulation of our dollar. Now, what if that lawyer decides to not achieve their vision? What if that, uh, uh, not to pursue it? Uh, I don't want to go to law school. What if that accountant says, I don't want to be a, a, a tax accountant. I don't want to go to be an accountant and I, I don't want to get my CPA. They decide not to do it. What if that caterer says, I don't want to open up a catering business? Well, where's the lawyer going to eat? Mm. They're going to have to go outside the community. Where's the accountant going to get their legal services done? Have to go outside the community. Where's the caterer going to get the legal services done or get their taxes done? Outside the community. So every service that they would have been provided before in the community, spending the money in the community, circulating their dollar effectively, they're gonna have to go outside the community, taking their money outside the community, making the, the community in which they're taking their dollars richer and richer, but the community in which their dollars are coming from becomes poorer and poorer. So it was that lack of, so what made that dollar circulate? Well, people say, well, products and services and the availability of them. Well, if you go deeper than that, it was vision that made that dollar circulate. Because mm -hmm. if those people didn't have their vision, then essentially they wouldn't have had anybody to spend their money with. So it was a vision that made the dollar circulate. It was a vision that empowered the community. And where there is no vision, the people perish. Mm. So that's what I feel that we really ought to, res that resonates with me when I think about that. So your vision, you, we need your vision to be successful. We need your vision to be pursued because at the end of that vision, there's someone waiting on you to bless them. I need to spend my money with you. And my, if you're in my community, I need to spend my money with you to make sure our community is successful. So we need to have an exercise for that. And that's for the vision. I want you to write down, where do you think you'll be? One, five, 10, and 20 years from today. This is all step two, vision. Mm -hmm. One, five, 10, and 20 years from today. And be specific. Write a budget for your five and 10 year vision. Mm -hmm. And that means take a budget out. What do you think your mortgage is gonna be or your rent's gonna be? Are you gonna have any more children for the young millennials out there? Are you gonna be in school? Are you gonna go back to school? Where, how much money are you gonna be making from this job that you're gonna have or this entrepreneur, this business that you're gonna start? What's your budget gonna be? Because when you start to write budgets down, and I call them forecasting budgets of where you think you're gonna walk in life, things start to come together and they start to gel. And write that budget down and start marching toward that. So that's step two. Now step three is called resources. Now for step three, we have to understand the four precious resources that we have are time, money, and everybody knows about time and money, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, time is more precious than money because I can make a million dollars and lose a million dollars and make it back. But if I 
If you take my time, I can never get it back. Mm. So time is time and money. Now then you can't forget about knowledge and people. So many times individuals forget about knowledge and people. So you're only one person away from achieving your blessing in terms of people. That one person that you meet, that, can, that you come across with, that you network with. So you never know how they're going to bless you, and, and as you as you walk across their path, as God places that one specific person for you to connect with. So treat everybody with love, treat everybody with respect, be kind with everyone. You're never going to meet someone from now for the rest of your life that doesn't know something that you don't know, right? Mm -hmm. So there, so everyone is unique in that fashion that everyone had to, has had their own walk. So you should treat everyone with respect because they know something that you don't. They have knowledge about something you don't. And that's with everyone. There's, no, there's nobody on the face of the planet that, is, is, that you know exactly the same thing. Right. So again, treat everyone with respect. You never know what you're gonna get from them. You never know what you're gonna give to them. So I need you to write down, especially five people that you need to connect with that can help you achieve your vision. And I, I give you 30 days to do it. Five per so this person, these are people that can help you start a business. These are people that can give you insight and guidance. P please consider Dare to Dream Network as a part of those individuals. Absolutely. And write, write us down. Reach out to us on our Facebook page. We want to connect with those individuals. So I want people to write down five people that they want to connect with within the next 30 days that can help them achieve their vision that you haven't connected with before. These are not people that you've already talked to. Right. These are brand new people. That's good. I want you to expand your network. If you're the smartest person in, the, in your circle, you need to find a new circle. <laughs> and, and, and we have to think about it this way because I know a lot of folks that are way smarter than me and I thank God for them all the time because they give me so much intellect and so much ability to just think bigger and better and broader and better than I've ever had before. Mm -hmm. And then for knowledge, I need you to write down five books that you want to read over the next six months that are going to help you. When I started Optimum Capital Management, my financial planning company, I read four books, how to start a financial planning company. And I spent less than $10 on Amazon to start this, to, to, to buy those books. They helped me start a business. So starting a business is easier than it's ever been before. And we need to be very deliberate on doing that. And then final, the step four is a plan of action. We want you to write down five steps that you, with, with dates and times attached to them of when you're going to get the first three steps that you wrote down accomplished. Mm. When you're going to get that vision accomplished. When you're going to mm. write down your vision. When you're going to get that budget together. When you're going to buy those books. When you're going to meet up with those individuals who can connect you with and expand your network. When are you going to sit down and, and write out your 20 uh, 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 skills, talents, or hobbies that you haven't possessed? So these four steps of success are for people out there, if you do this every, I do this every six months. It helps individuals to just get centered on exactly what they're good at, and it gives them a picture and indication of exactly where they want to go. And, and you might already have a business. And I'll tell you, when I started a nonprofit, I did this exercise. I said, well, you know what? I think God is pulling me in a different direction, and this is giving me an outline that's showing me I need to maybe move in a different direction where I'm not. Maybe I do need to do a nonprofit because I had a for-profit. Maybe a nonprofit would be better suited for that. Mm -hmm. Started the nonprofit, got fully funded, and uh, that helped me get my book tour. And I was traveling over 14 cities from funding that I got from my nonprofit that I wouldn't have been able to obtain had I not done this exercise. So that's what people should do before they start the business. That is so mm -hmm. rich. Mm -hmm. It's so good because especially as I was listening, that whole idea of the plan of action, because mm. now you've linked yourself to some dates. You, you've said, okay, if you don't, if you just say, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do that, then that's just a dream. Mm -hmm. you, it's just a dream because you're not, you have nothing to tie action to it. But if you say, okay, I want to do this by this date and this by that date, right. And then now you've got, you've tied it to a date, mm -hmm. and now the expectation is even deeper on you because you you have a, a time in which to fulfill this. Yeah, we, we have to force ourselves. We have to be deliberate in, in making sure that we are moving in that right direction. We have to make sure that uh, uh, we're, we're writing down and we're, we're not stagnant. Okay, because what sometimes individuals do as entrepreneurs or prospective entrepreneurs, people that want to get into starting their own business, they're stagnant and, they, and, they, and it's, it's in their mind. Again, we, I've said this before, the number one place where you can find most of your dreams is in the graveyard because people die with them. Yeah. And what happens is if you don't fulfill your dreams 
if you don't pursue these dreams, then all the blessings that were going to come from those dreams for other people, God gave you these visions for a reason. And he wants you to fulfill them because there's someone waiting on, hey, you know what, hey, I, I need a job right now. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have had it unless you started that company or you have a business right now. So I have some additional tips that I can provide for individuals to, to just kind of help individuals navigate to starting that business. Uh, and, and the first thing individuals have to do is when you're starting that business, is get your personal finances in order. Mm -hmm. That's the first step of, of any uh, small business when you create Before that. you even get started. Look, we, we, we have to do so. We have to make sure we're getting our personal finances in order. Uh, we have to make sure that we're getting our credit together. We have to make sure that we're performing a budget. For those individuals out there who are working, I mean, thank God for that job, okay? Mm -hmm. Use that job as a bridge job because as you're making enough money, to pay your bills, you need to work your nine to five so you can work your five to nine, okay? And that is when you go to nine to five, you're doing your job and you're reporting, but then from five to nine, that's when you do your research on your other job, right. that you wanna start in your second career, uh, that you wanna start because you wanted to start this business and you wanna get all those types of things done. So get your personal finances in order, get your credit together. Here's a few steps on building up your credit have to be, again, making sure that you're paying your bills on time. You know, yeah. one thing with that, Ryan, is for me, like for a while there, my credit was really messed up because I was self-employed. Sometimes if, if, when you're self-employed, if you don't work, you don't get paid. And if certain things happen and you don't work, you don't get paid, so you can't pay your bills. But now, praise the Lord, I am employed and I have regular a regular paycheck, so I do automatic bill pay. Mm. And all my bills, praise God, are paid on time because I do automatic bill pay. If I had to rely on myself to remember, oh, this is due the 1st, and this is due the 12th, and this is due the 16th, I'd never do that. Set it up one time, set up automatic bill pay one time, and then that's it. Automatically, it comes out of your check, and you don't have to, um, you don't have to worry. And that has changed my credit score. It's, it's been a blessing because when you do it that way, you get, you, your credit score goes up. So I was, I was really blessed to be able to do that. And I only do, did it once and it just handles itself after that. Absolutely. And, and a, a few other steps that we, I would like to give here are, well again, get your credit together. Uh, you wanna figure out what type of structure you're gonna form with your business. Um, when you start a bit, a lot of individuals that I've worked with over the years have uh, essentially said they're not going to form a structure and they've been getting paid in cash mm -hmm. uh, or they do, they've been trying to get paid under the table, which essentially doesn't allow them to file any taxes. And what happens is that, and then I get it, you, get, you don't want to have anyone catch up to you. Oh, okay, that's fine. But when you form the right structure, you know, whether it be an LLC or a corporate uh, corporation or an S corporation or a limited partnership for those individuals in real estate, especially out there. When you form that right structure, what it allows you to do is now you allows you to get deductions, okay? Every time you form a, corp a business entity, you get an additional 300 tax deductions available to you that you didn't have if you didn't have a, a, a business entity. Mm. So again, form that right structure uh, get a business mentor. That's the first thing we have to do is get someone who's been there and done that. As a matter of fact, I would even advise individuals to get an advisory council of at least three or four people who you know it could be your mother. I mean, my mother helped me out tremendously when I started Optimum Capital Management and she was right there so she was an unofficial advisory or council but other people who are knowledgeable about the industry who can provide guidance and, 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 and insight to you about whatever it is you're trying to get into. Uh, form, uh, I mean, talk to SBA.gov, SCORE, all these organizations, SBDC, uh, SBA.gov is a great website. You go there, they have a business template. Write out your business plan. And, and again, it, it's invaluable. So here are, are eight quick steps that we can do to write down and make sure that we, uh, after you've gone over your personal finances and put your budget together, eight things you should do to make sure that your business is structured appropriately. One, structure your business appropriately. Again, LLC, corporation, S corporation, talk to an accountant if you need additional assistance. Two, obtain an EIN number. You can go to irs.gov, 
uh, a website that I use a lot is inkitnow.com that helps me to file for within my state. We pay $200, whatever the fee is, but obtain that EIN number because we want to make sure that you're filing taxes, you get available, all those tax deductions available to you. That's a corporate ID number, right? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Three, open a separate account. You want to keep your personal finances separate from your business finances. You want to make sure there's no liability. This thing called piercing the corporate veil. You can get sued in case something happens to you in your day-to-day -day business. And you could lose everything. Absolutely. Four, listed, make sure you listed your business address. People want to be able to find you. Five, obtain all the required permits, license, and, re and registrations that you need. Hopefully this business plan should be able to uh, obtain that. And six, Establish a profile with Duns and Bradstreet, dnb.com. This is business credit. You know, it's, it's different from personal credit. You want your credit, personal credit to be up to date, but you want your business credit to be up to date as well. And then lastly, apply for a personal line, a business line of credit with different organizations like Office Depot, Staples, FedEx, T-Mobile. All these organizations will essentially allow you to build your business credit with products that you're purchasing anyway. So you want to make sure that your business credit gets built up to date as well. Ah, that's some good, that's some great info. Yep. So You're really giving us some good stuff. And you have a takeaway. I for sure us. do. All I, right. I want folks to be successful. All right. Wake up early, you find an oyster. Wake up late, you will only find a shell. What God has created for you to receive because you decided to sleep late was received by somebody else who was ready to receive the blessing. The successful entrepreneur understands this. We need more successful entrepreneurs. We need more people to step up to the plate and take the ideas God has given them in their head to make them come to fruition. To the current entrepreneur, thank you. I know your pain. We spend all of our time focused on politicians when you are the ones out there doing the real work, making the economy run. Politicians support economic growth, but you, you create it. For this, you are never fully appreciated enough. You took the leap of faith, and because of that now, you're the reason we have jobs to go to, products to purchase for our families, and services we can use to help us navigate through our lives. Keep up the good fight to not only keep your doors open, but to work and grow and expand as all of us will benefit. As a fellow business owner, I understand your journey and the many blessings it entails. To that person who is out there debating on whether or not they have what it takes to be an entrepreneur, you must understand the longings of your heart are not incidental. Those dreams that you have when you are asleep or awake are not purely happenstance, but are critical messages from God. The desires of your heart are not to be ignored, but consulted. God is too gracious to ask you to do anything that you hate, too merciful to ask you to do anything that you despise. Choose God and follow your passion, and you will find yourself having to make provisions for the abundant blessings coming your way. Whether you are a current or future business owner, we at Dollars and Cents support your endeavors. Email us at dollarsandcents at 3abn.org with any questions or chat with me on the Dare to Dream Network Facebook page. In the meanwhile, be the change you want to see. And remember, the purpose of life is a life of purpose. Till next time, Dollars and Cents, signing off. Music